we are talking about the Christian worker and who that Christian worker is. Paul told Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. To be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And Paul also told us in Philippians 4, 13, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he told Timothy also in uh, 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And then we, we saw the words of, of Paul to the Corinthians when he said in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14, he said, watch, stand fast in the faith. This is my admonition to you. This is my message to you today. And I, I don't want you to take it like, oh, that's pastor's opinion. That's a, that's a fatal mistake. It's not my opinion. It's the word of God. And you have to take the word of God as it is, the word of God, the word from God. These are to be treasured. One scripture that is just blessing me uh, more, over and over is the uh, scripture from Job 23, verse 12. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And here he says, watch. That means you watch and pray. You don't just, as it were, pray. You know, you don't know what's going on in the world. You don't know what's going on in your neighborhood. You just pray. He says, no, watch and pray. But don't let what you see fool you, scare you, deceive you. Don't be hopeless when you see things going on in the world. No, take courage. Jesus is coming for you. He tells us to watch. And then he says, stand fast in the faith. And this is what it means. Take your position and don't give it up. And he says, be brave, be strong. So that he wants us to deal with issues and things that are going on in the world. But then he says, as we deal with the things that are going on in the world, let all that you do be done with love. And that's what we were sharing with you uh, the last time. So he wants us to increase in our strength and in our vigor. And what I would like to do, and my wife will like to do, and those by staff and the pastoral staff and the elders, we want to pour into you all that God has given to us, not like we are better than you. You know, um, you know the, 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 the water bucket, when we were kids, we had a water bucket in the house. Maybe you all don't know where that. You had a water bucket where you had water in it. And we didn't always have indoor plumbing. There was a, there were no plumbing around and hydrants around. But we would take have a water bucket. The water bucket was very important. But also was the, ga the gas bucket was too. We had a gas can. And the gas can, if you, we always carried them in your cars. And you had a gas can in your car. Why? Because it, uh, the gas can was as, as important when you needed gas as the water bucket when you needed water. So God wants us to recognize that we all have something to give. God has given me and, and others, the pastors here at the fellowship and the eldership and, and, and ushers and all, all of us various duties, pr praise and worship, various duties. But we all have something to give you. So take what God has to give you. Uh, and so let, let's look at um, some words of, of Paul as he continues to talk but before I do that let's go to Mark chapter 10 I want you to go to Mark chapter 10 verse 28 Mark chapter 10 verse 28 and this is a scripture that blesses me Peter says uh, said to him said to Jesus this is a time after the rich young ruler had come and rejected God's plan for his life did you hear that he rejected God's plan for his life he was he was sedentary in this world system. I, I've said as an apology, when you see my passion, you feel my passion for God's word and God's kingdom, don't think I'm anti-country. Now, some people believe whatever they want to believe. I'm not anti-country. That would not be go a good thing. But I am saying to you that, that, that some of us are rejecting God's will for our life because we're, our eyes are taken off him. Look, Peter is saying this after the rich young ruler has rejected God's will, God's purpose for his life. He said, see, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, assuredly or verily, verily, or you can, I tell you the truth, Jesus is saying. I say to you, I tell you the truth. I say to you, amen, amen is also 
There is no one, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. You get all of that with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. So God is saying you will go through something. So we're not to be surprised concerning the fiery trials that are to try us. But this is what we, we are to do. When we see all of the difficulties in the world happening, then we are to do what? Look up. So what Jesus is saying, you should have an attitude of anticipation. How many of you get distraught rather than receive the attitude of anticipation? What's the song? There's a song too. I, I, I profess my ignorance here. Uh, God is doing something right now. You know, I mean, we sing some good songs. I mean, God is doing something right now. So in the midst of your uncertainty, the feeling of uncertainty, a feeling that maybe that you have allowed to come upon you of insecurity, God is still doing something right now. Are you still with me? So let me, let me go, switch gears and go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. The apostle is going to use three illustrations to support his command to Timothy. He, get, he told Timothy to be strong. And I'm telling you, be strong. You know, um, be a man. Be a man. That, that's what that also meant. Be a man. It's not saying that to you ladies. Just be strong. But he's saying to the, to the, to the males, be a man. And I, I love that. I love that. I tell you my story to show you my, my own personal vulnerabilities. And I, my vulnerable, vulnerable abilities uh, are what they are. I'm not ashamed of them. I have been ashamed of them. But God has taken me from strength to strength. And that's why I tell you things about myself. There are some preachers and teachers tell you nothing about themselves. But I tell you myself. So that whatever you may think I am, I say you can be that and, and perhaps more. The Lord gave, gave uh, Pastor Stan and me a word years ago in the oil field. And he said... Whatever, what I've done in you, it's taken me all these years to do it. In other words, it's not like you were so learned as a boy. No, it wasn't like that. <laughs> I hope it wasn't that, like that. But, but he was slowly and methodically bringing us to a place, and not only me, but others of you here in our eldership and in our ministry team. But what he, is, is, he took a long time because, as it were, he was doing a new thing. And, but what he said about the rest of you, they will come to this place where you are now much faster than you did because they will have the words that you are speaking and your lives as an example. That's what God says. So, amen. So, so God is doing something for you right now. And know what God is doing right now. The enemy is not in control. God is in control. Hallelujah, somebody. So he says to Timothy in verse 3, he uses this illustration to support his command to Timothy to be strong. He used the, the, the illustration of a good soldier, a disciplined athlete, and a hard-working farmer. He uses those three things. In verse 3, he says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You therefore must endure hardship. Uh, one stands in the first song that Brother James led us in tonight. Says, the church will endure. It will stand. Or it, or it will stand. No, it will endure. It will stand. And so the, in that song, they got that stanza from Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church. <clears throat> and what? The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And so God was not just talking to Peter. Now, there are some people who believe that it was only Peter, and we got to look to Peter. Que lastima. Well, yeah, 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 what a pity. Because, no, we look to the one who told Peter that. 
Uh, we, we respect Peter. You know, I respect Peter. In my preaching, I respect Peter. I don't talk all about his failures. I remind all of us that, that there have been only two people to walk on water since the earth began. And Peter was one of them. So that's how we should esteem him. So back to this story. He, sa uh, he says, you must endure hardness. So it's not just for Timothy. It's for all of us. We must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So Timothy, and, Ch and you don't have to go here, but 2 Timothy 4, 5 says, but you be watchful in all things, as Paul told Timothy. He told him later in 2 Timothy 4, 5. But you, he re was reiterating why, because he was going to go through difficulties. You and I will go through difficulties. All who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. All who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So he says, be watchful in all things. Be alert. Endure afflictions. Endure, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. That's what he says. So this is your command. All right? This is your command. Endure. Be watchful. Endure afflictions that will come. Don't think that some strange thing has happened. Don't think the devil is more powerful. Do the work of the evangelist. That is, keep telling people about Jesus. Fulfill your ministry, whatever ministry God has given you. Verse 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself or herself with the affairs of this life. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Wow, this is so, so big and so powerful. So he, he gives us the illustration of, 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 of a soldier. He says nobody in tank who is engaged in warfare, spiritual warfare, uh, entwines himself with the affairs of this life. That is, get all tied up in, in the, the, the things that concern this life. Sure, God may give you an assignment to do something in the world sphere, but don't get all entangled in it. It's your assignment from God. Do it well. But know to whom you should look, Jesus Christ, always. And what you do, do it as unto the Lord. I am working in this particular sphere in the world system to get this right because God told me to get this right. That's what we're to do. And so, but while you're doing that, you're going to have to endure some afflictions. So he says, no, no one engaged in warfare. So then my warfare is to do what God called me to do. And, and he says he doesn't get entangled with the affairs of this worldly life, this world, not the, the life in Christ, but the worldly life. Why? Because he wants to please his commanding officer. I, I was in the military, and there are many, many of you in the military. You have children in the military. And when I was in the military, we had to do what our officers told us to do. I, I resisted it when I first came, when, I resisted it because I had just graduated from the university, and uh, we, they, I heard, we heard, over, overheard the uh, drill sergeant say one day, these are, these are the worst group we ever had. <laughs> he said, they want to know why to everything. You know, we just got out of college. You're going, well, well, well sergeant, why? Why do we have to do that? Sorry. You know what they did? They ran the why out of us. <laughs> they push, we did push-ups to the why was gone. You know, they took the why out of us. And I believe that God is allowing some of these things to take the why out of you. So, he says, you don't get all involved with the affairs of this life. I know there are th important things in this world. You know, air, clean air is important. But I don't become a revolutionary trying to, to, to get everybody to stop the pollution of the dirty air unless God called me to that assignment. I don't get involved in that. I, I do whatever he gave me to do. He didn't tell me to go do what he told you to do. He told me to preach the gospel and go all over the world and preach it to every creature. And that's my job. You say, well, I don't know why you're not helping us get rid of the bad air. Well, that's your job. I'm, I'm here to fortify you and strengthen you while you do that with the bad air. Oh, you're still with me. I'm going to be done in a minute. And so you don't, don't get entangled. And then don't, e don't even get entangled with yourself. All of your needs and all your need for a therapist session. Don't get entangled with that. Because as, as, as the days go by, more people are going to come and try to sit by you because they're going to want to go with you where your God is. 
You know, I think it's Isaiah 60 that talks about that, where people get a hold to a Jewish person and say, we want to go with you. We want to go with you for your God. Your God is among you. And so this is what we're to do. Paul has admonished us earlier in 2 Timothy chapter 2 that, for, that, that in everything that we do, we have to do it how? In love. So that means that there is some rebuking that's coming to some people. Amen. But we're to do it in love. That, that doesn't mean we're going to be cheesy. You know, I, I hate to say this, brother. I, I love you and I, I don't know. But I, no, no, we're going to tell you the truth. Amen. We're going to tell you the truth. Uh, thank you back there. I'm going to just come back there and preach to you. Let, let, let's look at this before I, 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 I finish. I'll stop. I'm going to stop at the soldier, not go to the athlete. But as I said earlier, that we t we wanted to please our commanding officer. I had to please that drill sergeant. I remember uh, they were they they had a song. It was about uh, uh, war and fighting. I'm going to such and such. I'm going to kill the this and that. And they were they had us singing, walking down. They were breaking us down, you know, breaking us down, breaking us down. And I, I thought, I'm not going to sing that. You know, I'm not going to sing that song. I'm not going to do that. And I was just walking down. That drill sergeant ran up by me. He looked at my mouth. I opened my mouth. <laughs> Some of us need that kind of ac action from Jesus. What are you doing with what I gave you? I am training you to reign. They were doing it for another purpose. But I, I know there's a special relationship with the soldier and the commander. Second Peter uh, uh, 2.20 says, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the, Lord, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. So what that means is when you are now doing God's work, you abandon God's work for man's work, that's bad. It's bad for you. Let's don't do it, brothers and sisters. A soldier's single-minded purpose, his rigorous discipline, and unquestioning obedience to his commanding officer combine to make the figure of a soldier and apt one for a servant of the gospel. That's what God wants for us. You're not to ask God all these questions. You're not to ask God all these questions about why. I'll do it when you tell me why. No. No. No, I'm going to do it when you tell me. Oftentimes, I obey before I know why. Most of the time, God will tell me something and I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Somebody might ask and often ask, Pastor, why are you doing that? I said, I don't know yet, but I know God told me to do it. And, and God will tell me sometime on the way to the job or while I'm doing the job. Why? God is taking the why out of so many of us. We are Christian workers. Brother James, let's sing that. Amen.